Here is exactly how to use plans views or advanced roadmaps inside of Jira. First thing I'm gonna do is go to my left sidebar and make sure that my plans views is actually available. And if it's not, I'll go to the customize sidebar button. I'll make sure the box is ticked and just place it wherever you'd like it to go. I like mine somewhere in the middle or towards the bottom generally, but wherever you want these plans views to live, you can make sure that it's sorted correctly and it shows up. You could save your changes and then your plans will be on your left sidebar. You could go ahead and open that up and there is a plus icon to immediately create a plan, which we'll be doing shortly, but I wanted to show you what a good completed plan looks like. Typically, you'll be looking at all of your work items on the left side, your general fields after that, and on the very right, you'll have your timeline views. And this one's a little bit shrunk, uh, but I can show you a little bit more. And you'll have all of your timeline or your list views if you choose to view a list rather than a timeline in that section here. So let's go ahead and create our very first plan. First thing I'm gonna do is click the plus button and then I'm gonna enter a plan name. So this is for our mobile development team and I'm gonna type in mobile plan, there we go. And I'm gonna set the access to open cause I don't mind if everybody else sees this or I could add work to this plan from here, which I'll do with my first project, which is going to be the mobile planning or mobile development project. I could select a team optionally uh, that's in charge or related to that board. I'm gonna leave that blank. I could add more right here, but I'll show you how to add more once you actually create the plan. So let's get this created. And we now have our plan with our project of mobile development. And if I expand that, I now see all of my work items. So let's go ahead and add one more project to this plan that I wanna see since plans are really great at rolling up multiple projects into one place, showing you all of your dependencies, showing you all of your timelines. And it's a really good general overview of multiple projects in one general area. So to do that, we'll go to the mobile plan and we'll click on plan settings. In here, we're gonna have a, an option for work item sources. And we already have the project of mobile dev being brought in. Let's just add one more. I'm gonna add project mobile program and I'll add one more project of mobile platform. That way we have all of our mobile stuff inside of this particular plan. And I'll also go over some of the other general settings. You could change the name of your plans right in here. Go over the scheduling in terms of how you wanna actually see these, estimate in days or story points. You could choose different dates and timeframes for visualizing uh, and a couple of other options down below. There's also saved views, which I'll show you exactly how to create these and why they're super powerful, especially for multiple teammates and potentially stakeholders when viewing these plans. There's a couple more here. You could exclude certain things, certain work items if you'd like. You could remove certain work items or find certain work items that are gonna be associated with this plan, or you could adjust permissions on this to make sure that specific people that need access have access. Let's go ahead and head back to our plan. And now we have all three projects listed in our plans view. And we could change this ordering or hierarchy in pretty much any way we'd like. So we have our ordering by project and it's sorted by our epics, it's sorted by our stories, but maybe I don't wanna see the project, maybe I just wanna see all of my epics in a row and below that, all of our stories and tasks. In order to do that, I could go into the filters and I can make sure to set the hierarchy. You know, right now it's from epic to subtask and I could draw links to all work items from here directly as well. Uh, but I could change this to only show, let's say story and below. So now I've completely gotten rid of our epics from this view and I'm only looking at our stories. You could keep going up if you have your initiatives, if you have different programs and, and all that above your epics, you can narrow this down as much as you'd like. That way you're not actually seeing what you don't need to see. And same thing with everything that's below. So if you wanted to see initiatives, epics and tasks or stories, but you don't wanna see subtasks, you could do the same thing inside of the filter view to make sure that you're actually bringing in the correct hierarchy that you need. So I'll go all the way up to project and feature and now epics and stories are rolled up because we typically have things above them like our initiatives, projects, features, etc. You could also change view settings and these view settings are essentially how the data is represented. The difference between these two is the filters are the actual data that you're filtering within this view. So I mentioned that we could get rid of these projects and just show the epics. Right now it's grouped by project. I can group by pretty much anything else assignee if I'd like, I could group by nothing, which will show us our epics, initiatives, so on and so forth. And if there are like lone tasks that don't have an epic or whatnot, they will kind of be stranded like this because they don't technically fall into any particular hierarchy. So do keep note of that, but that's also potentially a really great way to find lone tasks that do need to be added to some sort of an epic. So we could change our general view settings, the grouping I just showed, the sorting, uh, the dependency style, which you could see in the timeline view and in a few other places. And then you could also send warnings about errors in any of the plans. This is really great for any kind of 
proactive things that you may come across. For example, if dates are coming up or if there's any kind of scheduling errors between tasks, teams, projects, et cetera. So really cool, you could change a ton of that and then we could also go into our timeline view. And in here, if our timelines are already scheduled and we have due dates showing and everything else, we will be able to see all those. If we don't, if we hover over them, we now have the ability to add them. So I can literally start dropping things into here as I go and creating a very simple timeline for these tasks. And I could start dragging these over, making them shorter, making them longer if I need to. And then this little link next to them allows us to create dependencies. So I'll just literally grab that I'll drag and then I could drop it into any one of these items. So I'll drop it right into the next one. And we've created our very first dependency. You'll see this little uh, notification on the top right, which means that we have unsafe changes. And what's really cool about these plans views is that everything that we're doing here is actually not affecting the task live on its board, on its project, where the teams may be working right now. This is sort of the unofficial staged changes uh, where we could go in, we could review all of those changes, and then we could save them and we could also send notifications or not send them. And uh, once I hit save changes, it goes through and actually applies those changes to all of our live projects. So we had dates added, we had dependencies added and so on and so forth. And anything that we change, including statuses and anything else inside of this view is not going to take effect until we go to the unsaved changes and make sure that we apply them essentially after we have we like what we have. So this allows you to play around with and try certain things, check certain things, see how things would roll up into certain places, how your timelines would look before impacting anything live on a JIRA project and sending out hundreds of JIRA notifications to your team. So really great way to sort of have a mini sandbox inside of your JIRA environments to see things from multiple projects, roll them all up into this view. So we have our timeline view. Let's go back to the list view because I wanna show you the field settings and configuration. So we have our start dates, due dates, everything else. If we have something that we wanna see that's not on here, we can first of all reorganize these, but next we could go to manage our custom fields. And these are back in our plan settings, which we could set up initially, but essentially all you have to do is add certain custom field, you scroll through, find the custom field that you'd like, I'll drop in impact as an example. And now hope we have the availability to use this in our plans view, to show it as a column and use it as a filter. So let's head back and take a look at what that's gonna look like. So I'll go in and let's see if filter showed up here. Let me give it a quick refresh. Um, so, or sorry, impact was the field, not filter. Uh, impact, add field. We should have impact. Let me try searching for it. There it is. Impact, we'll go ahead and get that added. And now we have impact showing up right here. And we could reorganize these if we'd like. I can make that field show up right after priority. That way it's something a little bit more relevant for the team to see right here. We also have the ability to filter on it right here. So you don't wanna include, especially if you have a lot of fields inside of this plans view, you don't wanna start including all of them in the filter unless you know you're gonna be using them. Otherwise this list is gonna get very long and exhaustive. So once you have a view that you like to use, you definitely want to save it. Make sure that you're going through and saving the views that you're working on. That way the next time you come back, you don't have to go through and go through all of those changes, column changes, timelines, and everything else. It's just gonna open up exactly how you left it. And the really cool thing about these views is that you can share them with the rest of your team. So I have the basic view and there's a little edited icon and I can either reset it or I can save it. So if I like my changes, I'm gonna save to this view. I'll go ahead and save again. And now the little edited icon is gone. And let's say I remove the impact field. Once again, maybe I'm another team member and I don't like the impact field. I'll remove it. That edited item comes back. If I hit reset, it gets reset. It comes back to where it was before. If I make changes, we don't once again have that ability to save or reset them. Now, the really great part about this is that if I'm another team member and I don't like that field, I could just create my own view and it'll have the same context the same information, the same sources, it'll just have a different way of representing the data, which is really cool. So when we are looking at the saved view, I can easily create a new one and say Josh's view. That way it's essentially belonging to me. I can make it the default for everyone, but this is just gonna be for myself. And I'll go ahead and save that view as my own. And now if I flip between capacity view, or sorry, I think it was the basic view, and now we have the impact field and Josh's view, which just gets rid of the impact field. And as you go through and things differently, you can change the groupings and everything else. As you do that, it'll automatically allow you to save those changes into your view so that you could easily pull it up and make it your default anytime you're in this plan. And it's really great because you could also have multiple views that are your own or your team's in which your team can easily go in and see exactly what you're looking at. That way there's no confusion and there's no misunderstanding between what the plans look like, what fields are related, what dependencies are made, and so on and so forth. So that's how we 
these are plans to use a couple of things at the top that you may find useful. You have a summary rollup, which is fairly new, but really cool because you actually have the ability to see kind of a reporting-esque uh, summary view of all of your, your roadmaps and advanced roadmaps and plans. Uh, then we have our timeline, which is what we were just looking at. This is the best one that uh, I think plans views represents. There's also program views, which essentially allow you to have sort of Kanban style views, uh, visualize dependencies, have different program boards. If you're a program manager, this is fantastic for you. Calendar view, which honestly, I don't find that useful because it sort of does what timeline view views does, but a little bit worse. But if you didn't want to see a calendar view and what goes where on an actual calendar, you could do that here. You also have a representation of your teams that are assigned to this plan if you'd like. This is also a fairly new feature. And if you're utilizing teams, you could add them directly here. Uh, and then you could visualize your releases and your dependencies here as well. Dependencies are really cool because you kind of have one place to see and view all of them and how they relate to each other. So feel free to do that. You could actually click on them. You could uh, add dependencies here, uh, remove dependencies. It's just one really quick and easy way to show and see everything that does have a dependency in your project and not show everything that doesn't. Uh, those are all the views available. You could also remove these if you don't like them. For example, I would remove the calendar view. I'm never going to use that one. Same thing with teams. Go ahead, review the teams or remove the teams. Looks like I can't remove this one, but I could rename them. I could set certain views as the default for myself. Maybe I jump on here and want to see summary first. I could set this as the default and my plan is ready to go, ready to share. And as soon as I'm good to go, all I have to do is click the share button. I enter in the name or the email, share via Slack, or just copy the link and said, send it over to my team to check it out. So that was a quick recap on how we use plans inside of Jira. If you're interested on how to use Jira and Jira software projects, check out this video next.